Hey guys, I'm Kelsey Caps, reader in residence at the Wild Detectives, and this is Wild Books. Before we get to books, I want to talk to you guys about an event that we're having on the 8th. Veronica Herber is going to be coming back to talk about her books, Migrant Words, a project where she was in Jackson, Wyoming, and she's talking to kids about migrancy, borders, and translation. It's going to be a fascinating event. Also coming back on the 16th, Bill Nays will be here from Body Head, and he'll be doing a concert in the backyard. Should be an awesome night. Now for books. So the books for this month are all relatively obscure titles from different countries, so I'm excited about that. So you're not going to hear about these on Instagram or Facebook, but they're all excellent. So our first book, Book of the Month, is Invisible Valley by Su Wei. It's a crazy book, honestly. It's from China, and the author himself, who is now a professor at Yale, so that should tell you something, was sent by the Chinese government for agricultural re-education when he was a young man in his 20s, which is about as exciting and wonderful as it sounds, all right? It's based during the Cultural Revolution when essentially the Chinese government was taking a bunch of people and putting them to projects, putting them to work and projects for the government. In this particular case meant tapping rubber trees in the middle of the jungle. So he gets sent to this agricultural re-education camp, and for the first couple of months that he's there, the main character, um, you know, kind of gets by. He's, he's not getting a ton of notice, but he happens to pick up this, this scrap of red paper on the ground, and that leads to this wild chain of events. So he picks it up, he gets married to a ghost, he gets sent into the middle of the jungle to watch a bunch of cattle, he meets a bunch of essentially what he calls drift people, but they're um, people who the Chinese government essentially couldn't get under control. So they all like ran into the hills. So there's this family of people living there doing logging. Um, they live completely by their own set of rules. They have an entirely different family structure. They're very different than the guy who gets sent by the Chinese government. So what essentially the book is about is being trapped between these two completely different dichotomies. On one hand, you have the extremely rigid, propaganda-driven Chinese government where you're meant to fit in, and that's the only thing that you're meant to do. And if you step out of line, you get in serious, serious trouble. And then you have this jungle family who literally lives by their own laws, and they have very specific laws. It's both a really interesting look into the Chinese government and how it was run at that time, which is a book that I haven't run across very often, and it's specifically from the perspective of someone who knows what it's like to be under the thumb of the Chinese government. And it's also a really fascinating exploration of spirituality, family, and love. So it's a good one. Boop! Our next book is short stories from South Korea. It's called Flowers of Mold, and it is fucking nuts, all right? It's a bunch of ho horror short stories. I don't know why <laughs> I struggle over that one. It's not horror short stories, it's horror, all right? Um, horror short stories, but not like in the vein of Stephen King where things are like a dog's attacking you or something like that. It's like really uncanny, unnerving, just creepy bonkers shit. Like one story, this woman lives with her husband and he like, of course, treats her like shit. And so she uh, makes a friend with her neighbor and her neighbor starts to borrow things. And like, as she borrows things from her neighbor, she starts to lose her memory. I mean, there's just like really unfortunate things happening, but the writing's amazing. It's not um, horror in the way that you don't want to read it or it's going to keep you up at night. It's more that it's horror that reveals how terrible um, ordinary circumstances can be. Like he is really good at taking the layers of daily life and showing the dark side of those things in a way that makes you reevaluate the way that you look at things and also generally how short stories can be written. It's a really fantastic collection. Last book is a book of poetry called Deaf Republic. It's written by a Russian woman who lived um, in the Soviet Union when it was still at its height. This isn't a normal collection of poems where the poems aren't connected. This entire collection tells a story. So it starts with soldiers who have invaded a particular Soviet town, um, and these kids are having a puppet show, and one child in the audience is deaf. And the soldiers come in, they tell everybody to move, the kid doesn't understand, and they shoot him. So the entire collection is essentially what happens in the aftermath and all of the villagers decide that they're not going to speak anymore. They're going to pretend as though they can't hear the soldiers and they can't hear each other. And the entire book is essentially about how do we talk about violence? How do we deal with violence? How do we communicate with one another when words are not sufficient for the atrocities that we've seen? 
um, and how do we connect in a place where words are no longer the things that have power anymore. And so there's sign language throughout the book. There is um, different portraits of different villagers talking about how they're going to raise their kids and what the family does, the, the deaf boy's family does in the aftermath. It's a fascinating collection of poetry and it's an excellent read. Check it out. That's it for the books. Just want to remind you guys that we have our normal lineup of events. So we've got Inner Moonlight, our poetry reading that happens every second Wednesday. And then we have Kids in the Cliff. We're gonna have a brief hiatus in the middle of that uh, for summer break. So make sure that you check out the calendar on our website. You can also look at all of our events on social media. You can follow our newsletter. And we also have book clubs. So one in English and one in Spanish. We would love to see you guys here. We want you to come hang out with us in this backyard full of sounds from Justin Timberlake, a truck beeping, and the air conditioning. We like you guys. It's good to see you. Good to see you. That don't make no sense.